All right, guys. Well, the electric. <laughs>this week's episode of the Hoodalas. Uh, we are doing the electrical, which is pretty exciting. Also, super nerve-wracking because I know nothing about it and I can't wrap my head around it and Blues tried to explain a little bit and this is kind of how it went. Blah, 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 blah. And then I start like going, ah, I don't understand. And here's where trust comes in. So I'm just going to trust that Blue knows what he's doing. And here it goes. Okay, so we are... Decided to wear gray shirts today. Yes, we're matching gray shirts. Okay. Um, more importantly though, we decided to go to Menards and pick out uh, stuff for our wiring. I know absolutely nothing about it. And Blue might know a, I know little, a, thing a little bit. Uh, right now we're kind of deciding like what size breaker box to use, and ooh, I don't know what we're going with. Yeah, we'll see. We'll figure it out. It's obviously 13 amps or a 15 amp breaker would suffice, but if we want to plug anything more in and have it run at the same time, then we would want to go blah, 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 blah. Can you explain that in simple terms? But you can use a 15 amp like breaker and a 20 amp outlet? Yeah. Wouldn't the breaker need to be the bigger thing? No, because um, if you plug in too many things that draws too many amps, then the breaker is going to trip instead of causing a fire. of cutting out and installing our breaker box. Does it fit? Perfect. It's a fit. Um, he also had to make this wall a little bit bigger because it was only... Inch and a half. Inch and a half. And now it's what? Four inches? Yeah, four inches. About the same depth as breaker box. So. Imagine that. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Such a dork. <laughs> well... <laughs> What I'm doing is um, drilling holes through the wood to put the wiring in so we can have electricity. So when you strip them, you have a gauge that tells you how long these wires need to be. The guy who taught me how to do these made me do about a thousand of these. Thanks a lot, Gary. And then of course you want to hook up your ground and your white wire first. Just in, just in case. The black wire is what carries the electricity. So you want to hook up your safety fail safes first. And we want to position your wire on the screw in a way that when you turn the screw, it actually tightens, tightens a wire around the screw. If you put it on the other way, like if you were to put it on this way, and go to tighten it, it'll actually un unravel 
the hook. So we want to put it on in a way that it tightens it and draws it closer. Like that, these little tabs. You can break these off and it separates the power from each each outlet. If you want this one switched, you break that tab, run you know, your, your power to a switch and back. You can switch your outlet while still keeping this one live. All right, that's the neutral, that's the ground. Now it's safe to hook up the uh, black wire which is the one that carries the electricity. Give it a couple twists and turns to pull in all that slack. How is it going? Uh, I'm here inside of this outlet. Look at me. I'm an outlet. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so dumb. Why are you doing that? I don't know. I'm going to stop now. Are you? Yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> we'll see. So there are a few places in this bus that we are wanting outlets at more window height. And a few examples of this would be in the kitchen above the backsplash or... Um, above the couch where we want to put a couple USB ports and in our bedroom. So Blue has came up with a solution to this, which um, is, I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. The other day he cut out a bunch of channels in some two by fours. I'm just going to put a dado in the backside. I'm gonna oh, start... a dado. Yeah, a dado or oh. a plow or a groove or a wire chase channel. So a dado just means like a hole. Like a channel. It's like a trench. Okay. So to speak. All right, gotcha. You get it. I don't know. Gotcha. All right. And you're doing that with the table saw? Yep. I'm going to start making one one cut at a time, but only so far through. And then I'm going to pull it up, bring it back, move the fence over an eighth of an inch, and the perfect place for the wires to lay. Just like that. I have not been looking forward to the whole electrical situation since like the start of the bus and actually to the point where I was kind of like do we even really need electricity like we could probably uh, go without it you know Amish do it right eh? yeah yeah and blues like Tammy it's not that bad like it's it's not a big deal so um yeah, anyways, so Menards was pretty stressful, but we got back to the bus. Blue's been wiring outlets and installing the breaker box, and it really isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, we ended up going with a 12-gauge wire. Am I saying that right? Blue, am I saying that right? 12-gauge? Yep, 12-gauge. All right. Oh, yeah, it is 12-gauge because Blue made a joke. <laughs> uh, we... I like my wire how I likes my guns. 12-gauge. Yeah. Now we're going to get a bunch of uh, controversy about guns on our site, but just a joke, people. Just a joke. Uh, anyways, we went with a 100 amp breaker box. Yep. Uh, we have a 30 amp breaker. That's in case we decide to get air conditioning. air conditioning, which on a day like today where it's like 100 degrees and like 100% humidity... That'd be great. I don't think it's actually a hundred, but I mean, it feels Close. miserable. It is so hot in here. Like, wow. That is gross. Toasty in here. <laughs> you, <laughs> you've got like sweat dripping off the end of your nose. I can't take it no more. So yeah, 30 amp in case we want to, you know, run the air conditioning. Uh, we got a 20 amp for the fridge and then the other breakers are 15 and all of our outlets are 15 so look at that I know a little bit about electricity yay me uh, 
Anyways, I will have Blue show you kind of the breaker box and give a rundown of what he did in there. It's pretty exciting that we are going to have electricity in our bus. And we don't have to be Amish. You know, the kitchen, um, refrigerator's right here. It's already hooked up. Um, I believe this one is to the living room on the refrigerator side. You should probably label these. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> And this is the uh, the kitchen in the living room. Okay, keeping in mind, I'm not a professional. This is uh, just, I guess, how I was taught, and it works. So I guess I wouldn't recommend following exactly what I do, because it may not be right. But there are videos and other electricians that you can look up that I've looked up, and just to, you know, double-check your work, because, you, you know, better safe than sorry. I'm going to show you how I would uh, wire a circuit to the main breaker. Right. Anyways, again, starting with, I start with the neutral and the ground, put it in the bus bar like so. Let's take it over here, put it into the positive. Just like that. Um, one power powers the left side. The other one powers the right side. So what I did, instead of having two uh, direct positives come in, one for each side, I made a jumper wire from this one to this one. Thus giving power to both sides. Again, this is not a how-to video. Um, play it safe. Do your own research. Come to your own conclusions. All right, guys. Well, the electric... Ah! Just kidding. <laughs> 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 You're a dork. Okay, so the electrical is almost finished, and it really wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. It's not scary at all. So that's awesome. And it's just, I mean, it's a huge step. Like, it's totally awesome that we now have electricity that we are going to be able to use. And though we don't have a power source, we are still able to plug in, and that is... Huge. It's huge. Big. It's yeah. Big. This is one step closer. Yeah. So, well, anyways, until next time, have fun. Make memories. And we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> We've got power. Power.